Hello, Kevin from JJ Hat Center, uh, from my home in sunny Queens, New York. Um, actually still on hiatus right now, uh, waiting uh, actually to be vaccinated and uh, for things to get a little bit uh, calmer in the city, safer, uh, before I travel and uh, go back to work. So in the meantime, I'll be doing, you know, hat lectures from uh, from my bedroom here. I've been doing it uh, since March. So we'll continue. When I get back to work, I'll start steaming hats for you and maybe doing more interesting things, interviewing some of the people who work there uh, and so on. And maybe even go on some uh, field trips. I'll show you some of the places around New York where, you know, you can buy feathers and you could buy different things for hats, you know, trimmings and stuff and uh, hat felt, hat bodies stiffening spray all that stuff so uh yeah it'll be cool when we get back it'll be like a rebirth you know it'll be really cool and everything but uh right now let's talk about some of the parts of your hat that uh you know you probably know about if you watch this show you know because you're like a hat nerd like me and stuff but uh, if you don't know about it maybe you'll learn one or two new things you know you, you never know right okay here's a hat right here okay so, um, okay, one of the first things, uh, you know, a lot of people always want to know about is this back bow, right? Um, as far as I know, we call it a back bow, but there's also um, a back bow that goes back here, too. Some vintage hats, instead of having a bow there on the side, the left side, they have it in the back. A lot of short brim hats and pork pies that have it. You'll see a bow back here, and sometimes right in the middle of the cross piece here, they'll have X, like an X of thread stitching, kind of just making an X there, and uh, sort of like a square box in the middle of the bow with the X like right on top of it. So it's really cool, you know, you can ask for a back bow and uh, they'll make it just like a side bow. It's not any harder, it's just, you know, more interesting. And I think it looks good putting a bow in the back actually, because the sides are just nice and neat, unobstructed, and, you know, you gotta have somewhere. Anyway, so um, yeah, that's the back bow. The, the purpose of it really is to mark the front and the back of the hat, even when you're in the dark and you can't see it. The idea is that if you're holding your hat, you're holding it on the inside, you know, your fingers are in the. If you feel this bow right here, you feel it, you know, when you're, you know, okay, there's the back. If you're holding it this way, wait a minute, I don't feel a bow. What's going on? Oh, okay. So that that allows you. Let's say you're walking out of the dark theater. The movie just ended. You got your hat. You want to put it on. Subconsciously, you know, you're holding it. You feel that bow exactly with your finger. It's almost put in a spot that, like, if you're holding it like this, it goes right on the tips of your fingers there. So you know where the back is. Basically, that's what that's for. And it marks it even if your little cardboard tag falls out. A lot of people try to. Uh, find the back of their hat by where the tag is. But some of those tags are just cardboard and then they, you know, they fall out eventually. They get torn or just fall, you know. Um, so another way to find it would be either the back bow, would find the back, or the seam. There's always a back, you know, the stitching there. That seam right there. That also finds the back of every hat. You just build every hat that way with the seam in the back so you don't feel it on your forehead, obviously. Um, okay, talking about the, um, the ticket falling out, that brings me to something else. Um, talked about this in one video. It was a while ago, though, so I'll get back uh, on the subject of it now. I'm going to do the old, old man reading glasses for this one. All right. Now, let's say that little ticket in the back falls out and you don't know what size your hat is. You're like, uh-oh, I don't know. It used to have a ticket right there, but it ripped out. Okay, there's always, always a backup size inside. So that's, that's my thing. Um, underneath the sweatbands, there's gonna be a size, because when they build these hats, they're gonna have a stack you know, sweatbands for seven and three quarters, sweatbands for seven and five eighths, sweatbands for halves, for three eighths, 
for quarters, eighth, seven, six, seven, eight. So when they build a hat that's a seven and three quarters, he's got to go over here and take his seven and three quarters sweatband, match it up to his hat. Okay, good. Puts it in. Okay. Now, those sweatbands are also marked. So what you do is you flip it up and you look for that marking. Okay, so just look on the inside where the sweatband is like all raw and stuff. And then you'll find it. Okay, let me find it here. There it is. Seven and three quarters. Okay. Let's see some other hats, how they write it. This is a straw with a sweatband. Okay, so here's my ticket. But that ticket can easily rip out. It's just a piece of cardboard. So if that rips out, what do you do? You flip it open, you look at the inside of the leather sweat, and there it is. It's written in pen or it's written in rubber stamp or both. As your size it is seven and one quarter. Look at that. One's big this hell. Here's another one. Okay, they have sizing over here on these stickers. So these stickers often come off. The stickiness comes off. They lose their stick or they just wear out. You can see it's it's almost completely worn. After a while, that 61 is going to be gone. Okay, so once it is gone, how are you going to find out? Well, look at the old sweatband, there'll be information there. Okay, this time, the sweatband info is really hard to read because there's a lot of gunk on here, but there's another backup size right here. Okay. This one says, there it is, 61. It's right on the edge. There it is, 61. Okay, with this brand, everything that you ordered was all custom. Every little speck, the bands, the color, the edge, the lining, the kind of leather, is there a logo, is there a wind cork, all those little things were all represented by a number. And then that number became the style. So when you look inside the hat, that's the true style. So it's got a style number, you know, it'd be like, 04021876611 and then we'll have a color the color is the number of the felt so let's say they have um, 45 different colors this might be 0041 number 41 color which is you know like an olive taupe um, and it's something like code and color and it's always in there so that's basically what the hat really is and then the store owner gives it a snappy name. He'll say, hmm, let's call this a, uh, a Marco or a Felipe, and we'll name it after our stock boy because he's really cool. Or I'll name it after my grandpa, whatever, something like that. Um, and that's how hat styles are made. But the true size and color and all the information is right on there. That's how it's done. It was done all custom by the store owner. Okay. So the secret backup tag. That's another thing that uh, you're going to find them in different places. You know, on the sweatband. Sometimes in the hat on the felt, there'll be another tag with information. Um, just look inside. If you have a vintage hat, it's a good place to find. Uh, you know, the name of the store and the name of the hat company. And you could do some Googling, say, oh, wow, this store, a uh, pen men's store, was in Times Square between 1912 and 1931. So this must be from the, you know, the 20s or whatever, you know, that area in time, circa. Um, oh, let me get a little drink here. OK. 
Okay. Let's get back to some more uh, of the hat's anatomy. Okay, let's talk about the wind cord. You guys know about the wind cord, right? This thing. Have you ever seen those things on hats? You, got, you, you know what they are. Okay, some of you hat nerds, you're gonna be like, oh, okay, well, I know what a wind cord is, and you know, let's fast forward this one. Okay, so what we'll do is quick. Um, this is a piece of elastic that goes around the perimeter of the hat. There it is, see the elastic? All right, um, let me show you on a different hat. Here's another one. This one's lighter, it'll be really easy to see. Okay. All right, the way it works is it tucks under the band in this little slot below the band. Okay. The idea is it's a little bungee that you can attach to your, um, your lapel so that if your hat does blow away from you, it doesn't go down the block and get run over by a car or go in a mud puddle or, you know, snow or whatever. Um, it just hangs from this string. So the way it works is when you need to activate the device, you just pull this thing off the crown, okay? It's a, uh, a loop. You call it a slip knot, lark's head knot, kind of the old noose effect, you know what I'm talking about, like a, a loop in a loop kind of a thing. Okay, so it goes over the crown, you take this, you make the loop small, you bring the loop to your finger, so it gets very small, just like that, wear it like a ring, okay? Okay, all right, let's pretend I'm wearing this hat. What you do is you take the button with the loop, you put it right through that lapel. You know that on your lapel you have that little buttonhole there, the carnation hole? Not for carnations, it's for wind cords. So you stick it through there, you have it on your overcoat, you have it on your blazers, your suits. So this goes through, and that way when you do finally lose your hat, you don't go chasing it. And this is a particularly long wind cord. It would probably hit the floor. It's also because it's stretched out. I've owned this hat forever. Um, the thing is with the wind cords, they don't, they do sew it there, you see, but they don't sew it very tightly. So if you want to go show off this trick to your friend, hey, you know what this is for? And then you drop it and you give it a bounce, it's going to break the string and fall on the floor and you're going to look like such an idiot, you know. I'm going to show my cool hat trick with my expensive uh, so-and-so. You know this is for back in the old days? Blah, blah, blah. Well, what they do is they just sew it with a stitch here and there because they figure nobody actually uses it anymore. So what you need to do is reinforce that stitch. You just go on the inside, you'll see it, you'll look for it. And then, you know, there, you reinforce it. Um, you could put some duct tape over it. Uh, better off is you, you get some thread and then you just you know, reinforce it, put two, three, four more stitches over it. You're just basically attaching this wire to it, and, you know, it's not a wire, it's a string. And um, the whole stitch you could cover with a little piece of duct tape, if that makes you feel better. And then you've got a stronger, you know, bond, and then you could start, you know. But either way, I wouldn't let it bounce, you know. If you're showing it, who knows how strong it is. Let it drop and show them, eh, it doesn't go into a mud puddle. And you won't look like a jerk, you know. But um, that's how these things work. And um, right, let me put this back. Now you want to put it back. You just open the loop again to hat size. You put it on. Okay. And that's it. Uh, go back one direction. It should tighten the slack. The other direction will loosen the slack. Zang. Uh, believe me, it's easier than that. Mine was really about triple the length it should have been, so typical wind cord is not like that. It would be a little smaller generally.
this one I have it too. I don't think I took this wind cord off. is the stitches okay you want to go next to it go through and then just you know find where where it's spiking the wind cord there and either spike through the cord or go around it or you know whichever way you find it easier to sew give it some reinforcement if you're really planning to use this thing you know for like serious wind and rains and stuff otherwise if it's just you know going to stay there ignored or just you could leave it alone. Um, I think I might have reinforced some of my stitches. Probably not. I don't know. I think I did it for other customers. That's what I'm remembering. I generally don't care about things like that so much because um, I don't really use the wind cord. Um, as far as wind protection and stuff, you don't need chin straps and contraptions and this and that basically it's all about getting the right size you need to tighten your hat using the padding or the um, the cap Bennu sweatbands um, and you just kind of hone it down you know get it to the point where you can lock it down at your eyebrow and it won't fall you know when you're tying your shoes and then uh, if a wind does come you just pull it down further to your brow where your head is the biggest the brow bone and you put your head down a little bit and the wind won't take it, and that's it. Bring it back up over the brow. The train passes, the wind's done, you know. Thank you. 
Okay, we've talked about this lately. The reed is inside of here. This little tube on the end there. Okay, not here. This is the sweatband, okay? This is a reeded sweatband because here's the sweatband with the reed. Okay, the reed is right inside of here. This is the end part of the sweatband. You ever notice it's got that little lip on it? It's not just decorative. There's something in there. Okay, it's more like a wire, but sort of like a thick piece of nylon fishing line. Kind of like, I don't know, what's the like really strong 500 pound test stuff you use on like blue marlins, whatever. It's like that, you know, it's some like really strong fishing line. And it's under tension. So basically, if you're trying to pull a 57 onto a 58 hat, it's that little wire ring that's hurting you. That's what's giving you the problem. That ring doesn't want to stretch. It has a little elasticity and then it pulls back, you know? It's flexible enough that it doesn't shatter when it, it you know, it just pulls back and then kazing, right back like a rubber band. So that's why you can't stretch hats. Um, inside of there is the reed. If you want to take it out, you can take it out. But the reed also gives you this oval shape it makes it so that no matter what you do it bounces back to that oval and that's important to give your hat structure and to keep it looking like a you know a Stetson and if you take it out it starts looking floppier and you get more toward that old vagrant hat kind of like an old Woodstock kind of thing you know 
and it's okay if you're a musician and you want like a really soft look or you want to roll your hat up or something like that maybe but it can take some of the structure out of your hat so rather than to take the reed out you just take the tension out and snip it cut it okay so that you can in other words this is what you do if your hat is too tight if you're 58 you got a 57 cut the reed you cut it in a place that is right here in the back right by the the seam okay it's kind of it's hard to uh there you go there's the seam okay so here's your reed here's the back seam so right at the back seam is where you want to cut the reed right there so don't cut the felt get the felt out of there you know just cut the reed so the outside is you've got a little leather kind of tube. I don't even know that's leather. It's probably plastic at the very end there. So you want to take it, strip that tube a little, make a little slice, just a little, okay, on the tube itself. And then see if you can get something in there, the point of a, uh, I don't know, the point of a pointy scissor or a, a pin, a needle, hat pin or something and pull that reed up, you'll see the little nylon fishing line in there. The idea is you want to get a scissor through there so you can cut it, okay? Cut the reed, a wire clipper, if you have one of those needle nose kind of wire, little wire clippers with the points, that's it. Clip the reed, okay? When you're finished, you'll have the two ends sticking out. Just shove them back into their respective little tubes. That's usually enough. Just get something to stick it in. You can take a plastic fork or something and use the uh, the little point of, of a, like a plastic, you know, fork you get at the diner or anything. A pointy scissor, you know, a, a pencil. Just poke them back in there. Usually you don't have to use any glue or, you know, or seal it up. But if you want, you could put a stitch in there if you're good with a needle and thread. And, uh, you know, you're just really good with it and you don't mind doing it, do it. Me, I'm not the cleanest sewer I can sew, but you know, not that clean. So a lot of times I just I shove those ends back into the tubes. And if they're fine, they're not sticking out, I just leave it. And they usually stay put, you know. Um, so what did we talk about? We talked about the wind cord. We talked about the hidden sizes. We talked about... What else? The reed. It's gotta be something else. Hmm. Let me think of something else that you guys might. The old Hattie hat. There she is. Huh? All right. Talked about the little bow inside the back bow. guys know about this, the teardrop has a little bubble on top there. This can actually be adjusted. So if you need more depth, you can raise these things. Okay, what you do is you soften up just the inside with steam. Try to leave the outside hard, okay? But the inside part, right in there, since it's already a shape that's coming up, you could make it come up more, okay? Generally your head will make that happen, okay? It'll push it up but sometimes it pushes it up and it pops it out like that. So the idea is you want to try to get this deeper without it popping out, okay? The idea is that you, the whole middle gets softened with steam, steam it, steam it, steam it, all of this, soften it up, and then you push, start pushing it up with your hands on the inside, you know? As it softens, it'll, it'll raise up nice and easily. Get it to the point right before it pops out like that, you know, get as high as you can, Okay, and just hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, and you raise it. Okay, if you just hold it there for a few seconds while it's cooling, it'll stay like that. Okay, so you could kind of get that deeper and deeper. Now generally, if you're the type of guy that's big and you need more depth, it's going to be up here. Nobody's going to see this bubble anyway, but... Um, 
there are ways of flattening it out. Once you get it nice and big, you can cool the top of it, put it upside down against the tabletop, and just rub it, and then that top will get flat. Instead of bubble-like like this, you can get it flat. I think I made a pork pie the other day. I, I demonstrated that technique, but uh, this is a hemp hat. There's a lot of uh, stretchiness to it, if you notice, you know. It um, has a, uh, a flexibility to it. And uh, a durability, too. So if you have the uh, hats that crack, split, this, this won't do that. They're definitely slightly heavier than Panama's, but not that bad. And um, that's it. I think uh, I went over about four things. I'm going to try to keep these videos a little shorter than they, they were. So I was getting carried away with a lot of hour-long videos, so we'll try to keep this one closer to a half an hour or less. You know? oh, I already came at 32 minutes. Mm -hmm.